Happy Monday! My name is Ellie. I'm here with Anna McNaught. Hi! <laughs> so excited to be back here again with all of you and with Ellie. This yes. is so exciting. It's going to be so fun. We're going to talk um, through some Photoshop and photo manipulation and then also career building. Um, using Instagram and um, turning your passion into a business, which is really exciting. Yeah. So um, feel free to hop in the chat. Tell us where you're from. I'm from San Jose, so right here in the Bay. And That's awesome. I'm originally from the East Coast, from Pennsylvania, and now live in LA. Yeah, so let us know where you're from. We'd love to hear um, where you're at and how far away you are, how close you are, um, and then we have um, full schedule today and tomorrow. Um, so we have the Daily Creative Challenge. Um, you can go back and watch the replay of that. Um, that was earlier this morning. And then um, I'm here with Anna now. Um, after this will be the XD Creative Challenge with Melody. And then Adobe Live, again, um, designed for any screen, which sounds awesome, with Gatri right after this. So make sure you stick around for that. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. So, yeah. And then, as always, we have our chat and win, so make sure that you're active in the chat and you're engaged. We'll be doing that in a little bit. Um, you'll have an opportunity to win a prize, which will be great. Um, and then, um, if you're wanting to join us in the um, Creative Challenge, make sure that you um, go to the Challenge tab um, so that you can Submit your challenge, it's right up here. You see the chat, Oops. the chat, and then the challenge um, is right here. And um, our challenge today is to um, create a glitch effect using um, filters um, and layers in Photoshop. So it'll be fun to see what you guys create. We'll be pulling those up um, a little bit later and looking through that them. That so. so cool. I'm excited yeah. about that. It's gonna be great. So. Yeah. Oh, hey, Michelle. So awesome. Love from my hometown. That's amazing. Oh, awesome. We have Anna from Colorado, Diane from Baltimore, and Chloe from Malaysia. Wow. Wow. Lots of people joining from all over. This is really exciting, guys. I yes. can't wait. We're so happy that you're here. All right. So do you want to go ahead and yeah. tell us a little bit about, about your work and what you do, who yeah. you are? Yeah, let's do that. So um, I am, I guess you would call me a digital artist. Um, I'm also a photographer and graphic designer. And now I teach people how to grow their businesses on Instagram and how to become so awesome. better at Photoshop. Clearly what we're going to be doing <laughs> today. So um, yeah, I started my business about three years ago, and um, or I started posting on Instagram about three years ago, and um, you have my Instagram up, so maybe yeah, we can take we a look can at that. Yeah, we can go through that right here. You can see all of your awesome work. Thanks. Yeah, so I, um, about two years ago, after I was working a nine to five job in a dental office as a graphic designer, mm -hmm. and I was definitely lacking some creativity. So I started posting my work on Instagram and it really started gain recognition because I was doing these like surreal pieces that were kind of different than mm -hmm. what people were used to seeing. And about, um, I guess I would say a year into posting on Instagram, I was able to kind of start teaching people how to do the same and get a business going from it. And then two years after that, so a little over a year ago now, quit my job and now I am a full-time digital artist, Instagrammer, traveler, you know, <laughs> all of those things. Yeah. So um, it's been a really amazing journey and like I can't wait to share tips with everybody. Yeah, it's so awesome. Eric says that's just what I needed to know. So we're really excited to learn more from you. Yeah. So um, this post that we're going to be, or this photo that we're going to be working on today, you guys can see this is kind of a little creepy, a little <laughs> cool maybe. Some people say it's either terrifying or they love it. And <laughs> the reason I chose this post was because um, it's my self-portrait for one, and then also um, it's one of my early photos that I did that kind of went viral. It's my biggest seller for my business, so I like sell out of that at every art show. And That's then, cool. um, yeah, it, I, I really want to talk to you guys about like the ideas that go into before having something go viral, and then tomorrow we'll talk about what to do after something goes viral. Perfect. So yeah, we're going to build this Let's today. Let's get started. All right. 
So um, I'd love to hear from you guys if you think this is creepy or cool. <laughs> um, and Let's hopefully go. it won't freak you out too much <laughs> because no, I am not dead in this and no, I'm not actually cut in half. <laughs> She's a full I'm body alive. here in I'm case here. you were wondering. <laughs> So this is what we're gonna be making. Obviously you can see the, the finished image here and we're gonna start with this image here. So you can see a huge difference between the before mm -hmm. and after of like, you know, just what the power of Photoshop and what you can do with manipulation. Yeah, was this um, on a timer or did somebody take this for you? So actually I call it my self portrait, but my husband took it for me. So, <laughs> you know, we're kind of one in the same. Your so vision, <laughs> his execution. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But. Um, yeah, we were in Joshua Tree and the road was actually right here. And we were driving by and it was like this crazy, windy, kind of cold day. And we had gone up there just to explore and do some Milky Way shooting. Mm -hmm. And I had this idea that I really wanted to do like a frame shot, but I didn't really know what I wanted it to be. Yeah. Um, and this was like, this was three years ago when I was first getting into it. And so I think, I think at the time I had maybe like, I don't know, 5,000 followers or yeah. so. Um, again, not that followers matter, but you know, we still gotta talk That's about nice. that. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, it always helps out. Yes. But um, when I posted this, it got like over 7,000 likes. And mm. at, at the time that was like, oh my God, this is insane. Like, yeah. you know, this is more than the people that are following yeah, me. Yeah, so people were seeing you who weren't even yeah. following you. Yeah, yeah. and it was, it was really cool because I had no idea that this little creative idea that I had in my head would like make such a big impact on people. Right. So um, yeah, we we took I took this little frame that I had, walked off the side of the road, and kind of set it up in different ways, and laid it in the camera, and it was freezing cold, blowing wind, and I was just like, okay, let's just do this, this, <laughs> this, this. Okay, good to go. Let's go. Get out of here. Go get food. And so then, obviously, you guys know with me, the magic happens in Photoshop. Yeah. So. Cool. Jordan says, why not creepy and cool? I love it. It can yeah, be both. It yeah. can be both. It doesn't have to be one or the other. It's That's a really good so, point. That's so, so true. I love it. Okay. All right. So Matthew is asking, who is your inspiration? Let's see. Um, I have a lot. Uh, <laughs> Well, I actually learned Photoshop from Aaron Nace or Flern. Um, mm -hmm. That was one of my big inspirations in the beginning. Yeah, and then awesome. there's a lot of different people on Instagram that I'm inspired by, um, like Noise, he's really cool. Um, let's see, who else? I don't know, the list goes on and on and on. I can, <laughs> I can share that later with you guys. Yeah, but, that would be awesome. Yeah, um, okay, so with this image, um, it's actually gonna be a pretty easy in terms of compositing, all we're gonna do is be getting rid of uh, my body here. And then we're gonna kind of get into doing some fun things mm -hmm. with um, like the background and all of that. And I did this back when I was doing kind of all different styles. And now my style has merged a lot into like nighttime, kind of like glowy, colorful, different scenes. And so I was thinking today what we could do is kind of bring that style into this piece of art. Mm -hmm. um, Ellie and I were talking earlier about how it's really interesting when you can look back on old work and then see how you can repurpose it. That's like a huge thing because a lot of people ask me all the time, you know, what do I do? I don't have any images to work on. I have nothing new. Well, the, again, this image I took three years ago and I'm gonna turn it into something new today mm. with a different look. Yeah, with the same tools that you were using before, but yeah. you can do a totally different look with the same yeah. exact tools, which is really cool. Exactly, and I think something funny to note is that the first time <laughs> I edited this image, I was actually erasing things instead of layer masking, and uh, you guys pop, yeah, you probably were. all are like <laughs> cringing at that thought, and yes. I was like, I look back and I'm like, oh my God, that was just three years ago. I was erasing and like destructive editing, so. Yes. Now you can look back and see how far you've come in yeah. just a few years. Yeah, exactly. How much you've learned. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do, I, I already set up my canvas here, and just so you guys know, um, I usually, when I set up my canvas, I do either an eight by 10 or a 16 by 20. Um, and that's gonna already be sized uh, proportionally for Instagram. So Instagram operates on a four, four by five. 
Um, and a tip is to always post vertical on Instagram, even for all of you landscape photographers out there. Instagram is a vertical platform and your post is gonna take up more room on someone's phone if it's vertical. It means they're gonna see it longer and they're hopefully more likely to like it. So um, yeah, so I usually do eight by 10, 16 by 20 if you're thinking about printing this, um, if you wanna sell it. And for this one, I originally did 16 by 20 because as I said, I, I sell this one all the time. So it's all set up. I have my layers already in here and I just drag them in. And then what we're gonna do here is just add a layer mask by clicking this little guy right there. All right, let's see, what are people saying? Um, yeah, everyone's just talking about working here. Um, I would love to know more about what you were doing before you started doing images in Photoshop, like kind of your path to get to this place. Yeah, yeah, so um, I moved to LA about six years ago and I actually, when I first moved, I was interning with a photographer and not making any money. So I was like, okay, what can I do to make some money here? And I started selling solar panels door to door <laughs> and it was absolutely horrible. Gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so that was just like, yeah. you know, six years ago, and it's crazy how much can change, you mm -hmm. know? And, and I was literally knocking on these people's doors with my pitch, like, hi, my name is Anna, and I'm with this solar company, and I was wondering if you would be interested in buying these solar panels for me. Please, please, please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so then I got a job at a branding agency. Thank God I got out of the solar industry. And, yeah. um, then from there, got this dental job that I mentioned earlier, working as a graphic designer. And, um, you know, as I said, my creativity was just like dying. It was mm -hmm. just really hard to kind of keep up with everything. And so I started doing this, this work for Instagram and for myself and to kind of like branch out again met like a ton of cool people, got into this new style. Yeah. And then when I told um, my supervisor that I was gonna quit and do my own thing, he decided to retire and he was like, if you're leaving, I'm leaving. Yeah. And now he actually works for me as my copywriter and my uh, kind of like business partner to bounce ideas. So it That's kind of so came crazy. full circle. <laughs> That's such a cool story. Thanks. Yeah. Anna would like to know if you have um, tips for putting yourself out there and how you can actually get work, which we're definitely going to talk more about. Yeah. Yeah. I would say, I mean, it really is definitely a challenge. Challenge, like something that I've struggled with over the years you know mm -hmm. when I first moved to LA it was like constantly reaching out to people on Craigslist and like crying and just having these horrible horrible yeah. afternoons and so I feel like in terms of getting yourself out there obviously Instagram has been like a huge launch pad for me mm -hmm. and that's something I want you guys to all know like today in talking about Instagram and growing your Instagram I, I saw someone say about a popularity contest and that's not what I want you to think about. I want you to think about this as a launch pad for your business, for mm -hmm. the next step. Like, I would not be here today teaching all of you if it wasn't for Instagram, Yeah. you know? And so, like, really sharing your work and just blasting it in front of people's faces all the time and reaching out to as many people as you can and mm -hmm. not, not accepting no. I know that's so cliche, but it really it makes a huge difference for people to, you know, see that you keep showing up over and over mm -hmm. even when you're just like shut down. Mm -hmm. Are you self-taught or did, how um, did I, you? I went to college for yeah. photography and graphic design okay. and then um, you know have learned a lot on my own and yeah, then, yeah like and a, a lot from like watching people like flirt and mm -hmm. everyone so mm -hmm. and then YouTube videos and and now I actually have a course teaching Photoshop so you guys can learn from me so <laughs> <laughs> little pitch in there. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone should check it out. Um, if you go over to Anna's website, um, you'll be able to see all of her courses right here. And 
There's a free Instagram masterclass. All of you should take advantage of that. Yeah, yeah, definitely take that. I have like videos teaching you all how to grow your Instagram in there. And yes. then also free Lightroom presets so you can get in with the Adobe crowd and hang out. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's so cool that you're providing resources like that. Yeah, I definitely want like everybody to be able to have a chance at, you know, these amazing programs that have yeah. really launched my career and and just to kind of like dive in and learn for themselves. So. Yeah, yeah, the more you practice really, that's the best way to hone your skills and grow. And yeah. Figure out what your style is. Cause when you're in school, a lot of times you're still figuring out your style and it's yeah. not really until you get out and you're doing work on your own that you really figure out. And your style can evolve too. Like you're exactly. talking about this image that you did three years ago is a different style than yeah. what you have now and that's okay it can change and evolve over time yep yep it's so true i mean i i moved to la to be a fashion photographer now i'm like as far from fashion photography <laughs> as you can get and it's something that i would not even want to go into at this point yeah. you know and so yeah it's really true like your styles evolve you as a person evolves i mean when i like I'm a completely different person mm -hmm. when I from when I first moved to LA. You yeah, know? that's really encouraging. Brandy says that I took your course and it was good. I keep rewatching it to get better. So thank you for creating oh, it. Oh, that's so awesome! Thank <laughs> you so much, Brandy. That's really amazing to hear. Yeah, so cool. Okay, so should we dive in on this? Let's edit? dive in. Let's see what you're, what okay. you're doing. Okay. So um, for any of you just joining, I set up this canvas and we've been kind of chatting a bit with just my dead body here. But, um, <laughs> we, I added um, a layer mask here. And so all I'm gonna wanna do is to get rid of the rest of my body and then we're gonna kind of start to work on some of the details here. Mm -hmm. So I am painting with a black brush, which will get rid of everything. And then I have my flow on 100. This is actually something that I talked about last time. And one of my favorite tips is uh, playing with your flow of your brush. Because um, if you're on 100 with, your, with the flow, then you can like deeply erase everything. That's mm. not what I want to have. I want to have that. There we go. I just <laughs> turned this layer on over here. Um, so then, but then if you have your flow, like say down to, I don't know, like 17 or something and you start painting, oh my God, not even on my layer mask. You guys, it's early, not a week <laughs> yet. <laughs> um, okay, so if I'm on my layer mask and I'm painting with a low flow at 17%, you can see that it just slowly starts to get rid of it. Mm. And it's similar to opacity, but with flow is it will reach 100% or it will reach whatever your opacity is. So in this case, 100%, but it will get there at a slower rate. So it's really, really great for blending and mm. merging things together. Um, but in this case, I just wanna fully erase everything. So I'm not worried about blending right now. So I'm gonna put the flow on 100. And then I'm gonna come over here to this frame edge right here. And if you guys click with the brush and then hold down shift and then click again to like in a straight line, it will get rid of it. I'm like, what am I trying to say here? It will get rid of it in a straight line if you hold mm. down shift. So that's really helpful when you're trying to go around like corners and yeah, stuff. Yeah, you can avoid removing the frame also. Yeah, exactly. So I'm just gonna do that again here. Again, I'm clicking first and then holding down shift. So in this case, we're getting some of that background frame. So you can see here, I'm using this as a background, this old other frame photo. Mm. I'm just gonna actually like move that over a little. And we'll start to tweak this to get it right. So um, you can see here what I did was I took a picture of me in the frame and then I took a picture of the frame empty so that I had this nice clean background to work with. Mm -hmm. And obviously this would be a lot better if I set it up on um, a tripod, like then I could get that background exactly. You can see here it yeah. shifted off, but we're gonna play with this to make it work, so. So cool. When you were doing this image originally, did you have any idea that this was gonna be a big image or was it just completely for fun? Yeah. You had no idea. It was completely for fun. It was just like this idea that I had and I had no idea that it would kind of go viral and that mm -hmm. it would be a, a big seller. And, and that's one of the things that's so important to note. You know, I, I feel like 
a lot of people are like, well, how can I make this picture go viral or something? Yeah. And it's always in those times when you least expect it that yeah. something does, you yeah. know? <laughs> and um, I think it's just a matter of like continuing to practice and do your work and, and do it mm. for you, not mm -hmm. for other people. And I think that shows through so much. I mean, the times that I've tried to do my work for Instagram or yeah. like to appease like a certain style or what people are doing, what other people are doing, it always falls flat. And it's like really when I am focused on my own thing and things that I love and that empower me yeah. that I feel like you know, more people respond well yeah. to it. Well, there's more passion in it, right? Because it's something that you actually are excited about and you exactly. love. And I think people can see that when you're passionate versus a photo you took just to take a photo or just to put something yeah. together. Exactly. And there's no excitement behind it. Yeah, that is like such a huge thing. And it's something that I still struggle with, you know, to this day. Like there's times when I'm like, oh my God, I really just need to put something together. And yeah. I've been posted on Instagram in a while and like people can tell. And then, you know, you, you just become like inauthentic. And yeah. It's like that word's so overused, but it's nothing, no one wants to become inauthentic. No, absolutely you know? <laughs> not, absolutely not. So now that you've had some images go viral and you have a bigger following, are you able to kind of predict now? Can you kind of tell when you're making something like, okay, this one could be big, or is it still surprising? I don't know. Surprising? I mean, Instagram's <laughs> such an evil platform. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll be like, man, this one's gonna kill it. And then I'm like, oh my God, it, this, d wow. Like no one liked this, you know? Or like I'll yeah. put, like this one piece I did, this girl underwater, it was like really cool, I thought. I mm. love it. And she was like kind of floating and all these like flowers around and stuff. And I was like, oh my God, this is gonna kill it, so good. And then no one liked it, so. Yeah. I, again, though, another reason why you have to do your artwork because it empowers you yes. and not your audience, yes. you know? Yeah. But with that being said, you know, you definitely, if you're trying to grow business, this is like the double-edged sword here mm -hmm. with growing a business and creating art. If you're doing this for money and to have a business, you do have to kind of, you know, go towards what people like. And yeah, figure out what they're looking for. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And especially like, and I know you know this, doing client work, yeah. you know, you have to do what people want. Yes. <laughs> and so that's kind of, that's like a big pain, you know, and, and so that's definitely kind of the downside to with your artwork turning it into a business mm -hmm. because now all of a sudden like you know they always say like don't don't get paid for what you love to do yes <laughs> even though you know people say do what you love yes. yeah <laughs> it's like so so hard it's really hard <laughs> yeah do you find that like has it changed for you since you started doing this as a career is it less exciting for you or do you sometimes feel like not as passionate because it's a job now? Definitely. I would feel like over the past year or so, it's become a bit harder to kind of like keep the passion and the, the career aspects going at the same time. Mm -hmm. Because when you're working on growing a business and you know, you're making these free opt-ins and getting people on your email list and reaching out to clients and reaching out for brand partnerships, you're like, oh my God, when am I gonna have time to do my art? Yes, yeah. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I think you definitely have to kind of like balance it. And then in the past, uh, I guess I would say like six months or so, I've gotten a lot into like mindset work and really digging into, you know, like who I am as a person and yeah. um, what kind of strengths I want to put into my business and the messaging and all of mm -hmm. that. So mm -hmm. that's really cool. Yeah. Um, let's see, really someone cool. said, how is this sold? What type of print? Yeah. Um, so I usually sell my prints just on um, like the photo paper and I actually use a site called Nations Photo Lab and they do a really good job of printing. Um, mm. And it's not like super fancy or anything, but I am I haven't really gotten into like doing limited edition prints or anything like that. Um, so I sell them from all the way from like five by seven mm -hmm. up through 16 by 20 or custom size. So that's a great way for any of you out there that are artists or, you know, photographers like to sell your work. And it does take time and a yeah. lot of effort and obviously money up front, mm -hmm. but 
like what I do too is I actually um, will have my prints for sale, like just at, digitally, either on Instagram or on my website. And then when someone orders it, I drop ship it to them. So I don't have to have any upfront costs. That's a really great way for yeah. people to do that. Ryan asked if you do all your printing yourself or do you outsource any of that? No, I outsource all of that. That's the yeah. Sight Nation's photo lab okay. that I mentioned. So you send That's... it directly there and they take yeah. care of everything. Yeah, and they do a really good job. They also do metal prints, which I love. I think That's cool. metal prints are amazing because they give like this really kind of awesome glow to everything, yeah. which you guys know I love. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, but okay, so now I, as I'm talking, I'm just over here editing. But your body's done. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so I just basically layer mask the body with this background image here, just to kind of catch any of you up that are watching. Um, and so all I was doing was just getting rid of everything. Let's show that. Getting rid of all of that extra. And you can see I had leggings on under my dress because it was so freaking cold. <laughs> Okay. So Anna asked if you take all of the photos yourself for your composites or if you um, use stock photography as well. I do use stock photography sometimes. Like um, this one, obviously I took, but a lot of times I'll use stock. Um, I love going on Adobe stock, of course. Yes. But you know, I, and some people, it becomes a battle between whether that's okay or whether it's not okay to use stock and I feel like you know if you're creating artwork it's fine like mm -hmm. you I can't you know I haven't been to Japan and the photo we're working on tomorrow is of Mount Fuji and it's something I had in my head and I really wanted to get it out on paper or mm -hmm. on digital in this case and so I was like okay I'm just gonna use stock and that's fine. yeah yeah so absolutely I totally agree with that yeah. There's only so many photos that you can take. And if you're inspired yeah. by something and you want to create a whole new image with it. Exactly. And some really people cool. are very strict about taking their own photos, which is awesome. I think yeah. more power to you. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if you have an idea and you want to share it with the world, like, why not? That's yeah. what the stock is there for. So Absolutely. Plus, you can kind of collaborate with people that way. I've actually mm -hmm. met people through Adobe stock, if you can believe that. That's so cool. <laughs> That's really I've cool. Like photographers like, yeah. that you use their images. Yeah, and I've been like, That's wow, cool. I love your work using this. Is that yeah. cool? And then it's like, oh my God, like I have some friends that share their work through Adobe stock. And yeah. like, it's just, it's awesome. And that's one of the things I love about Instagram is like, it connects people so much. Like it sounds creepy and weird, but I've met some of my absolute best friends yeah. through Instagram. That's really cool. So. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, Cody is asking how you have gained your followers on Instagram. So I know when you had this photo, you said you had about 5,000, is that right? Yeah. So how did you get that initial following to begin with? So I guess that kind of all started from like posting different images I was doing. And I mean, we can scroll way back in my Instagram if you want and talk about it. Um, but um, yeah, it was kind of like doing doing this different style in the beginning. And then what I started to get into was like a lot of consistency in w the way mm. I was editing, like the colors you guys can yeah. obviously see from this. That yeah, I this love. is super consistent and Thanks. very like, like you said that you now do a lot of night scenes and I think that makes it consistent yeah. too. And then it, now it's starting to get yeah. a little so bit brighter. I use like, mainly you know pinks purples blues those are like mm -hmm. my favorites and really doing that and then also like when a post goes viral like what happened in in this case with this portrait is um a lot of feature pages will share it and people that you know have like pages that have millions of followers for example like if photoshop shared my image with what they have like over three million followers or something um, then you're leveraging that other page's audience and they're coming to you and they're coming to your page and looking at your work. And so yeah. I remember like there's that image. There it is. <laughs> right here. I think that was like the second or third time I posted it. Okay. I, so you do repost work. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's a huge tip too in itself. Like people think that once you post it, you can't repost it and you totally can. Like <laughs> I share things over and over and over because you're constantly getting new people mm -hmm. coming to your page and like, you know, share in the caption, like here's one of my favorite pieces of there work that again. I did. Here's something yeah. that, you know, like, or have you guys ever, I don't know, done something like this, whatever, like ask, yes. ask your audience questions too. That's a great way to get people involved. 
Cool. So um, in about 30 seconds, we're going to have our chat and win. So make sure you're in the chat. Um, you know, have the chance to win some stickers from Sticker Mule. Yeah. Super um, fun. Someone said, how did I choose my palette and my, let's see, camera of preference. So color palette I chose just because I love those colors. Ever since I was little, <laughs> people always were like, oh, and it's a pink and purple girl. You know? <laughs> like I, I, those are just colors I'm attracted to and it really yeah. worked in terms of like sunsets and night images and mm. stuff. You can see in like the early days of my, if we can switch back to um, my Instagram back here, yes. you can see like the colors were so just random, like mm -hmm. darker browns. It's not as cohesive. Yeah, exactly. Like I have green stuff. Yeah. I was kind of all over the place. And then if you keep going, you can see it was like really random. <laughs> it's like, see, you, everyone it's really starts cool to somewhere. It's really transformation though. <laughs> yeah, and like I was just, you know, there you, you go, can back see, to the beginning. Yeah, I used it as like, and I've deleted a ton of stuff. I had like yeah. college things. Oh, but. it's time for chat and win. Okay, we are back, um, waiting to hear who is gonna win a um, hundred stickers from Sticker Mule. Sticker Mule is awesome. Um, there's so many things you can do with stickers. If you get a logo, look at you guys can tell <laughs> yeah. I have stickers. Yes, you can do some guerrilla marketing. Yes, give them away to people. <laughs> Awesome. And Sticker Mule is great. I've actually used them before and they're really, oh, really? awesome. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, really high quality stickers. That's awesome. Lots of people chatting yes. in. Hello. Chatting <laughs> in. I need to design stickers, says Destiny. Yeah, 100 stickers. OC May. Congrats. Congratulations. Hope you have fun with them. Let us know what you're going to do with all your stickers. And um, if you didn't win, you can go to stickermule.com slash Adobe Live 19 and you can get 10 stickers for a dollar, which is a steal. So all of you should take advantage of that. That is a great deal. Yes. <laughs> all right. All so right. back into the editing. Um, so let's see, other tips I can give while we're working? Yes. Um, I, I guess one thing to note is that like, all of this takes a lot of work, you know? I think a lot of people uh -huh. think that it just, you can post on Instagram and it all happens. Mm -hmm. But like, if you don't practice your craft and you know, like whether it's Photoshop, whether it's photography, design, mm -hmm. illustration, whatever it is, or just business in general, if you're not practicing and doing what you're posting on Instagram, you're not gonna get any better and you're not gonna like grow as yeah, a- Yeah, absolutely. You know. Do you have a schedule or a plan for your posting or do you kind of do it sporadically? I used to and something I teach my in my classes is to have a schedule and a yeah. plan. Um, and usually for that I say to post, um, I, I recommend that people post at least one to two times a day when they're starting yeah. um, in the morning and in the evening. My posting time now is like around 8 a.m. Mm -hmm. um, Pacific time. And so you kind of want to post based on like your time zone and everything. Right. Um, and, but, you know, if you, like I see someone said, Instagram is a full time job. I completely yes. agree. But <laughs> there's tons of apps, you know, where you can set it up and everything. I, yeah. I use for my travel page, I use later mm -hmm. and I just schedule it out like a month in advance. I actually manage people's Instagrams as well. And so, you know, I'll yeah. set that, I'll get them all set up, ready to go. And uh, so then you're not thinking about it all the time. You yeah. Know, you're working on your artwork while your Instagram runs and grows in the background. Yes. And that is that able to like post it for you automatically yeah. too. Yeah, that auto post, so it's like a game changer. <laughs> yeah, I know someone was asking about hashtags earlier. Do you have any tips on hashtags or yes. using those? I have a lot of tips <laughs> on hashtags. So <laughs> hashtags I feel like have not been working as well as they used to. You know, mm -hmm. uh, Instagram in general has changed a lot yeah. over the past few years, which yeah. I'm sure some of you guys know. Um, and it's just like become a mess. Mm -hmm. But um, in terms of hashtags, what I see people doing wrong a lot is they'll be like, 
um, like let's say for example if I was posting this image and I was gonna hashtag it and I would say like today in hashtag Joshua tree we had so much hashtag fun I took a hashtag picture mm -hmm. like that doesn't work and yeah. it looks amateur and it yeah. looks like and no offense if anybody's doing this <laughs> totally fine that's why we're here to change things so yeah. Um, you want to use hashtags that are targeted based on that image. Maybe they're about like, or maybe they're for feature pages. Mm -hmm. Like Photoshop has a monthly challenge, you know, like um, hashtag PS underscore glow. That was one of them that I loved. Um, and so using, finding hashtags like that and then finding hashtags that have about um, 15,000 15,000 posts to 500,000 posts. Mm -hmm. um, and like if you did hashtag Photoshop, that has millions and millions of posts. Nobody's gonna see that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Your post is gonna get buried in that stream. So you wanna use like a good mixture of numbers. So looking for more specific hashtags then, but not too yeah. specific. Exactly. Where it only yeah. has five people maybe, because yeah. then no one's gonna see it either. Completely, Finding yeah. that happy medium. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so if it's just like a random word you made up and it has no posts, Post, then yeah. obviously that's not good. Um, but but um, what was I gonna say? Yeah. Oh, and you can also do a branded hashtag. So mm, I have like your hashtag own. Anna McNaughty. Yes. And, yeah. That's cool. Um, yeah. Benjamin is asking the name of the automated IG posting, and you said it was later, right? Yeah. So um, and Sprout, Sprout is one is you good. can use as well. Yeah. Like you just have to find what works best for you. I've tried out so many different ones. Like you have Hootsuite, all of yes. those. Um, yeah. yeah, let us know what you guys are using. If you have any that you use or you like, yeah, It'd be fun to hear what people are using. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's do some color correcting on this photo so we don't bore you guys too much with Instagram, <laughs> but could talk about that forever. So, yes. um, all right, so I was talking earlier about changing this maybe into a night scene, doing something mm -hmm. fun with that. So we got my body all cut out here. And one thing that we wanna do is you can see that um, this is a lot more in focus uh, than the background. The background was slightly blurred, depth of field working here. And so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna convert this into a smart object. Let's see. All right, so now it's a smart object and we're gonna come up to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. So Kiki asked if you find that your engagement goes down with post automators. Have you found that? Um, I don't know because I haven't used it on my personal page. Okay. Um, as far as I've noticed, no, but that's something I should probably start to look out for. Yeah, I've heard that that happens, but I've also heard that it doesn't. I know. So I don't know if anyone really knows, and I think engagement on Instagram in general has gone down across the board. Oh, big time. And I, I've heard from people directly at Instagram that a lot of that has to do with people just follow more people now and yep. they're liking less, they're interacting less, they're more just scrolling. And so it could be a post automator, but it could also just be yeah. people aren't engaging as much anymore. Exactly. Like it's changed so much over it's the past different. few years. It's yeah. like, you know, I mean, when uh, Facebook bought Instagram, like things just went really south and <laughs> um, between like the algorithm and, yeah. you know, now like there are so many bots and so mm -hmm. you, you no sooner get 10 followers and you lose them all. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah. And you don't even, I mean, I know I don't care about bot followers because yeah. that's not even real engagement or yeah. people that are going to actually interact and I'm sure you don't care about that either. Exactly. And, and yeah. you know, like people obviously buying followers, like mm -hmm. so many fake pages. It just like it's gotten out of hand. I know Facebook's trying to clean it up, but yeah. And then in terms of like engagement, it's all like everything we all say is speculation on what we yes. have seen works best, but nobody's like actually, you know. Yeah, I'm, no like, one actually knows I know, everything. I mean, yeah, A lot of like, it is like trial and error. Yeah, it really yeah. is. Like I'd, I'd love to have a sit down with Facebook and just be like, yes. yo, can you what tell is me happening? what's going on here, please? It's like, yeah. oh. So, um, yeah, people said Instagram algorithm super tough. Very tough. Totally agree. Yeah. Brandy it's... says Instagram is so interesting, so not bored at all. Oh, good. good. <laughs> Glad to hear that. So I know you guys are here for Photoshop, too. And yes. you know this is creative career building. But yeah. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'll try to like mix in a little Photoshop with tips. Yeah. Um, but Go back and forth. Yeah. What I'm doing here is just trying to like kind of match this uh, background blur with 
the blur I'm creating here. So within Gaussian blur, I'm just kind of like eyeballing it to see what looks good. So like that looks pretty close. You can zoom in. And I'm gonna have Whoa. to clean up my layer mask a bit there, but you can see it looks pretty good. There's like some, a little bit of noise back here that we could add in too. You know, mm. you can really get into the nitty gritty details of everything if you want in your edits. And which is something that I definitely do when I have time to like dig in. Oh, let's see. Tim yeah. said you could also use a more accurate field. Oh yeah, I have used that too before. Mm. That's a good idea. I like always revert back to what I'm used to. Yes, and then, there's so many different <laughs> ways to edit the same exact image and yeah. do the same thing. Yes. Yeah. It depends on the I image know. or what you are comfortable with. I know, and like with all the new things with Photoshop, like yeah, sometimes there's always I, new things. Yeah, and I still hold shift when I try to scale something. I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> so old habits die hard, but yes. I definitely am gonna try to use the field blur. That's really cool. Yeah. Okay, yeah. You I, can I, change the blur amount per area with the field blur. Cool. Thanks, Tim. Good yes. to remember. Um, Okay, so now what I wanna do is just come in here again with, um, I'm actually going on to my Gaussian Blur layer mask and um, I am going to have a black brush and then this is where I'm gonna really use flow. So I'm gonna bring this like all the way down, I don't know, to like six or so. And by using a smart filter here on this layer, I'm able to turn my Gaussian Blur into its own layer mask. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna come in and kind of that's even like a little too much, so we can bring this flow down to like two maybe. So Miguel is asking if you still feel like Instagram is important. Definitely. I would say like, I know it's harder to start from zero now. I know yes. it's a lot harder to grow now, but I still feel like it's so important. I mean, you mm -hmm. have to have a platform and whether you choose Instagram or Facebook or Pinterest or whatever, you have to have a platform that's like mm -hmm. your baby, yeah. you know? And um, a lot of people, you know, and something we'll talk about tomorrow is kind of growing your email list mm -hmm. from that platform and then they become your people kind of like. Yeah. So, you know, if, as you guys might know, like Instagram owns your followers, like yeah. you don't own them, you know? And so if Instagram were to shut down tomorrow, knock on wood, please do not, <laughs> um, you would lose all of those people. Yes. So if you have them coming to you on to, or coming onto your email list through like a freebie or something like that, which we'll talk about tomorrow, um, then now you can contact these people and say, hey, I switched over to this platform because Instagram shut down, come follow me over here. Yeah. And like now you kind of, I hate to say own those people, but they're like in you, under your name now. You can make sure that they see what you're putting out to, right? Because you send an email, you know yeah. that they're seeing it. Yeah. It's, there's, I think, less clutter sometimes. Well, sometimes in email as well. But yeah. if people like your emails and they're engaging, then they're going to open them and read them. Exactly, yeah. So yeah. there's lots you can do with that. Let's see. Instagram is a fad that will start dying off over the years. Oh, Derek, I hope not. But <laughs> it probably will. I know. It's sad. It probably, I mean, everything starts dying. But I feel like Facebook has done a really good yeah. job of maintaining it over the past few years, you know? I think even things like adding stories and adding things that, you can interact in different ways. It's yeah. gonna help it stay around longer. Yeah, exactly. What am I doing here? So one question from Miguel again, um, can a website be just as influential? And I think you would say a website is essential also. Yeah, definitely. But I would different. say, yeah, a website is for sure essential. Um, because then again, you can direct traffic from your Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of just having a website, I would say you need some sort of social media platform to get your traffic to your website. Yes, yeah, because how are people going to discover you? Exactly. It's very unlikely they're just going to Google search you and you'll come up and they'll right. follow your work. Right, and so yeah. like of course um, SEO for your website mm -hmm. is huge. That's search engine optimization. So that's one way they could Google you and find you, but yeah, like you said, yeah. less likely, um, unless you're blogging a lot. If you're blogging yeah. all the time, like maybe a couple blog posts uh, per week or something, mm -hmm. you know how to do SEO really well, then by all means, don't worry about social media. But 
It's free. Why for not? most people. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Plus, I think you get to engage with people who are following you, right? So you exactly. have people who are fans or people who have questions, and it's a better way to engage and build relationships than just they go look at your website. Yep. I, com- I completely agree if I could speak. Yeah. Um, <laughs> totally. Still early. Like, I know. It's really nice to, like, build that audience and then talk mm-hmm. to people. Like, for example, yeah. today, you know, going on here, I posted on my story, like, hey, guys, come join me. Um, on Adobe Live and everything. And so now you're like communicating with your audience, you're getting to know them. And as I mentioned earlier, hopefully even becoming friends with them, meeting yeah. like meeting new people in these places. Like, do you want to collaborate? Do you want to shoot together? Mm-hmm. You know, so if I had my camera with me, I was actually thinking of trying to meet up with some San Francisco photographers, but like a very bad photographer, <laughs> I left my camera at home. <laughs> That's okay. Sometimes you gotta go without it. You Sometimes guys gotta you, enjoy I, the moment. You have your iPhone. Yeah, exactly. I do mean, don't get me started on that. iPhone photography. <laughs> That's a whole different thing. That's a whole other thing. But um, yeah, I think you know. Sometimes you do have to take a break. So yes. So Kiki asked, how do you feel about blog posts then? Because you mentioned like blogging, and it looks like you have a blog, and yes. you are you have content there that people can go check out at annamcnaught.com. Yeah, slash we can switch over to that. Yeah, you can see it right here. So you have different posts, specifically a lot of them to do with um, Instagram and yeah, social media. Yeah, exactly. So this is, um, I kind of started this whole blog a few years ago. This was when my blog was called The Liked Photo. Maybe some of you uh, followed me on there. Now I switch everything under my own name, but I basically, little pop up there. (laughs) (laughs) Sign up for her email list. (laughs) So I basically um, write all my blogs based on the subject matter that I obviously have on my Instagram. So connecting all of your topics together. Like, so I decided I was gonna teach photography, Photoshop and Instagram. So Mm -hmm. I have like a blog post, how to use hashtags, how to use Lightroom, um, Instagram do's and don'ts. And so now um, one of my posts, one of my older posts, it's like how to set up a photography account on Instagram and it's ranking number one on Google right now. So that's bringing, or number two, maybe bringing traffic to my website yes, through SEO. Yes, and then SEO. they see your work from there. Yeah. I think too, if you have clients and you're trying to get client work, having a blog, um, it gives them a peek into your process, but also it shows that you know what you're talking about. Yeah. You know, yeah. and kind of like you're educating people and you're helping other photographers as well, but you're also kind of saying like, yeah, I'm professional. I know what I'm doing. And I think that's yeah. a great win for clients too. Totally. It's so true. And and also like building some authority in your niche, yes. you know, showing people that like you're the expert mm-hmm. in this field. And that's so important with everything you do, whether yeah. it's like through your photography work, through your artwork, through your business, you know, really just showing that like, this is what I do and I'm good at it without yes. like tooting your own horn. Yeah, you know? <laughs> and it's, it's useful and helpful for other people as well. So you're putting things out there that people can use. Yeah. Um, someone was asking, I don't know where the, the um, question is anymore, but Instagram versus Facebook page. Okay, yeah. What do you think about that? I mean, I'm biased because I love Instagram, but um, I would still say Instagram over Facebook page. I think mm-hmm. you could um, definitely, a lot of people have grown their Facebook pages really, really powerfully. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, a combination obviously of both. Like, sure. and, and then also if you have your Facebook page, then you can set up a business profile on Instagram and that's how you post automatically. Yes, you have and, to have that. Yeah, yeah. exactly. To you be get able to the see insights. insights. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> It's really no point. I know. <laughs> without a business page, you get yeah. so many more. Um, it's so worth assets. it. Yeah. And I've had a lot of people say, like, well, you know, what about engagement dropping and all that? But, like, who cares? You need to see your analytics. Analytics yeah. are key to growing a business. You need to see where are your people coming from? Why are they coming here? What do they like the most? Where are you gaining followers? Where are you losing followers? Yes, and then yeah. you can grow and scale, mm-hmm. you know? So, yeah, absolutely. Little, little uh, rant there. (laughs) Um, Okay, so some Photoshop stuff here. Uh, I grouped my images together here. I grouped the background um, and this um, top piece together Mm -hmm. just so we can start kind of doing some coloring to them as a group. Um, 
So I'm not really sure what I want to do with this. Last time what I did was I did kind of this like moody. Very moody. Yeah, like dark edit. Yeah. And you can see I actually went in and painted like my lips and I painted my nails. Mm. Um, then I did some like dodge and burn to like really bring out all of that contrast. Yeah. yeah. But this time, maybe we should do something different. And if you guys have any ideas, I'd love to hear them. Yes, um, let us know. What do you think she should do? What would you like to see? First, let's add some curves. I always like to kind of start with that. Um, and I'm just gonna clip it to the group below. And I know last time I was on here, like a bunch of you guys gave us some good tips for how to uh, quickly like clip. Mm. Um, but I, of course, can't remember. So. <laughs> um, if you remember, yeah. <laughs> let us know. Okay. There's like a shortcut. I'm so bad with shortcuts. I'm always like, oh, I just use my mouse. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but so let's see. Um, a lot of times what I do now, my recent thing is to, um, Hmm. Oh yeah, dramatic sky. Yeah, sure. you were talking about that the nighttime look, just yeah. because that's more your style now. Yeah, exactly. I was thinking of adding some stars. Maybe we'll do some like, I don't know, cloudy skies. Yes. What if we made it like super Game of Thrones? Ooh, theme, says. that could be cool. Okay. Yes. All right. So lately, what I've been doing is I've been first adding curves, and then I've just been dropping this like really low in the middle, and mm -hmm. then bringing this like down, and just kind of working it almost to be like really dark. And this is just—I mean, there's so many ways, like a thousand ways to skin a cat, right? Like you yes. can do whatever you want in any way that you want in Photoshop, and that's like the beauty of it. But um, so I'll bring this down really far. And then what I like to do is on the layer mask with a black brush, I put my flow really low. And then I kind of start to like paint back certain mm. things. Bring it back in. We're getting lots of suggestions. Thunder from OC May. Uh, Tim says you could even do a sky replacement. Um, Darren says red sands. Ooh. That'd be interesting. Um, Melanie says, dark rainy night. That would be cool. So many good suggestions. I know. Someone said, how did you build your website? Yes, I did use Squarespace, actually. Squarespace is great. I actually started on WordPress, and I was like, yeah, no way. WordPress is really awesome if you know coding. But yeah. if you don't have time to figure out coding, you don't know coding, It's Squarespace is really great. Yeah. So simple. Yeah, I completely agree. Like I had my website on uh, WordPress for, I don't know, like a year maybe, mm -hmm. maybe a little less. And then I had my personal website on Squarespace. So I knew I liked yeah. it. And I was just like, no, I'm gonna switch it. And everyone's like, you have shiny object syndrome, stop. Which I definitely do have shiny object syndrome. But I was like, no, <laughs> I know this is good yeah. for my business. And so I switched it over and oh my God, it was the best thing I've ever done. Yeah, yeah. Squarespace, you can make a really professional website that looks very unique yeah. just by dragging in some of your own elements. And it's so easy to use. Exactly. And like, and I highly- very affordable. Yeah, super yeah. affordable. And I highly recommend um, using the Brian family. Um, mm -hmm. For your template, it's really, really awesome. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but yeah. it's it's great because you can like really customize it. It's one of the ones that are recommended by all the like Squarespace designers and everything. Cool. So, all right, lots of good suggestions coming in here. Now I'm like overwhelmed. Yeah. I don't know what to says do. A sandstorm. Yeah, like oh my god, I, I need to go <laughs> gather more images. Um, yeah. But I think maybe I want to work on some like color balance first and then just we can go from there. Let yeah. it inspire you. I'm like debating if I want to, maybe I'll just do it how I would do it for my page. Yeah. And then we can kind of play with it from there, I guess. Yes. So Derek asked about Dreamweaver and Miguel asked about Wix. Have you used either of those? Yes. So I used to kind of know how to code like in high school and stuff mm -hmm. and I took a coding class in college and in that for that I used Dreamweaver mm -hmm. and I hated it like I just <laughs> I don't know more yeah. power to the coders like it's I, hard it's so hard it's very hard just like I don't have I just like don't have the patience for that yeah you know? yeah it's um, a lot of time yeah and then Wix is cool but I find Wix to be like really glitchy it just kind of mm. seems to um 
I don't know. It, it's like it ends up. I don't. I don't know how to explain it. It just like, will like add things to other pages and really like get messy. I know they fixed a lot, and um, now everybody's like Wix is great because you can add animations. But that is cool. It's not the 1990s. We don't need like crazy animations yeah. anymore. Yeah, yeah, it's simple. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Corey says I use Adobe Portfolio. Okay, That's a great cool. Option too. Yeah. Cool. MySpace. Yeah. Tommy Cody says oh my Michelle. God. <laughs> she had a great MySpace. <laughs> That's awesome. What about this guy? This was one I pulled. Like, what do you guys think of this? This from Adobe Stock. I think it could be kind of cool. That's really fun. Like, this looks ethereal, like something is happening. Yeah. So cool. Okay, so I just dragged this in and... And you said you got that from Adobe Stock. Yep, and cool. I think I searched like uh, Galaxy for this. Oh, cool. I actually just used this same background in a post that I did for Crocs. So that was business-wise, yeah. brand partnerships and stuff. Like, mm -hmm. those are really fun. Like, when, when you form a style that you become known for and brands start reaching out to you because yes. they want that style, and you get to do so work that you cool. love. Yeah, yeah. It's like really, really awesome. Yes. Are you finding that brands will reach you through Instagram? Is uh, that yeah, where you're they'll like email them? me, but they'll email you, but yeah. like they are seeing your work there. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. So they'll be so like, "Hey, we important. found you on Instagram." Yeah, like yeah. linking it back again. Why it's important? Because they'll be like, "Oh, we found you through this hashtag, or we saw yeah. your work on like this page yeah. or something," and so and that's like really, really cool, you know? Cool, yeah. Okay, let's see, what do I wanna do here? And don't forget, we have our daily creative challenge in a little bit, so in about 30 minutes, we're gonna um, hop over there. So if you want to um, go back and watch the replay for that video, um, the challenge is to design an image with a glitch um, in Photoshop. So we're excited to see what you guys come up with. Yeah. Um, okay, so I know um, I saw Tim said to do the sky replacement. Are yes. you familiar with the actual sky replacement tool? I know there's like a thing you can do. I haven't even done Specifically that. Specifically for yeah. skies? Oh, I didn't I didn't know about that. I like knew it existed, but I, to be honest, I haven't used it because Photoshop I... Photoshop has everything. I know. It's like, crazy. It's changing so much. It's like there's always cool new tools. And everyone's like, do you use this? I'm like, no, I still act like I... I'm using CS3. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to keep up with all the updates sometimes because there's so many new things added. And, yeah. You know, having time to play around with all the new tools. Yeah. Is, yeah. It's very time consuming. I know. It really is. Okay. So let's just see if. Oh, we Tim says there's not a specific sky replacement tool. Oh, okay. So maybe take that back. Wow. I totally thought there was. <laughs> I don't know who. I was watching someone and I thought they. They mentioned I don't know, that. Totally made it up. Oh, there was a sneak at Max. That's what it was. Oh. oh. <laughs> see, that's the problem. Max, like, throws me off my game because I'm like, oh, my God, did you guys see this new thing? And everyone's, and everyone's like, like, no, it doesn't exist. Yeah. I'm just going to use the magnetic lasso tool here. I don't know why I just opted for that so quickly, but I was just thinking. <laughs> like, you can use the pen tool. You can – what am I – that's what Darren says. Old school me would be pen tooling it. Yeah, I know. I used to, or I sometimes do that too, and then I was like, mm, I don't know. Um, oh my god. Okay. So there we go. We got some new sky. Wow. <laughs> um, so we can start to kind of like refine this layer mask if we mm -hmm. want here. I am. That brings in the colors that you've been using lately too. Like you were talking about the blues and the pinks and keeping all the colors cohesive yeah. in your feed. So you can see that right in the sky. Yeah, exactly. Like definitely kind of, I don't know. It's like, it seems to be now what I gravitate towards naturally. It's yeah. like I don't even have to think about it anymore. And mm -hmm. so I've seen like a lot of people that have done really amazing things with like blues or greens, you know, it all kind of depends on what you like, so. Um, so then I guess from here I would go in and kind of refine my mountains and so I would probably, let's see, come in and like paint on my layer um, to get rid of some of this and I'm just doing this quickly 
so we can continue talking about business stuff. Yeah. But I wanted to know um, how you knew when you were ready to leave your job and do this. Oh yeah, full that's time. a that's a great thing to talk about. How do you know? <laughs> that next step because that's really scary. I know it really it really is so so scary, and it took me yeah. a long time. Like I was I was thinking about it for a while before I actually did it, and like of course you know you want to kind of like build everything in the background um, behind your nine to five job like yes. either working in the evenings or in the morning or during your lunch break or whatever. So were you doing work like this yeah. specifically during when yeah. you were working at the dentist? Yeah, and that's actually, yeah. I was doing a ton of work when I had my job. Like yeah. I was actually editing a lot more than I do now because it was like, okay, well, I'm getting a steady paycheck so I can edit like mm -hmm. in the evening or mm -hmm. I can edit during my lunch or whatever when there's downtime. And so I was getting like, you know, maybe like four or five edits done per week. Wow. And so now I'm getting like, I'm lucky if I get one done per month because I am spending so much time on all these different channels to right. like build my business, you know, so I have to make free opt-ins and I have to um, then make the actual like paid thing, like the course or whatever. Yeah. And so you get to a point where you need to hire someone or you need to make your, raise your prices. So, yeah. um, and I, in borderline at the point of hiring someone. So, hey, submit your job application. <laughs> no, you want to work for Anna. <laughs> um, no, but you get to the point where, you know, you need you need help. Yeah. But um, in terms of taking the leap into quitting your job, it's really like, it. it's so per each person, you know? Yeah. It's like when you feel comfortable. But for me, what I did was I talk to my family, talk to my husband, like kind of bounce ideas with friends and then just was like, okay, how do I feel? I did like a lot of journaling at the mm -hmm. time to try to decide like what was right. And then I eventually, I think you just get to your breaking point. You mm -hmm. know, you just end up- You can't do it anymore. Yeah, you're like, I'm done. Like I, I've had enough, I'm ready to go off on my own. I'm making, you know, a little bit of money or a lot of bit of money, whatever mm -hmm. it is. And you just say, yep, I'm going to take the leap and I'm going to do it. And so you had some client work at that time. Yeah. Yeah. So I had a lot of graphic design side work. Yeah. Um, and then I had, um, I, I guess a, a number of like branded stuff for Instagram at the time. So that was good. And then when I started managing other people's Instagrams, that was mm -hmm. when I was getting at least a like consistent steady. monthly payments, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so then I was like, okay. And I remember like, oh, and I also moved at the same time that I quit my job. And it was like the most overwhelming week ever. <laughs> Yeah, it's a lot of transition all at once. Yeah. A lot of new things. But, man, I tell you guys, it is so rewarding. Like, mm -hmm. if you have the idea that someday you want to work for yourself and you're working a 9-to-5 job, just, like, I hate the word hustle, but <laughs> hustle and work your ass off because yes. you're going to just really, really feel so proud and so good when you make that leap. Yeah, yeah. And we were talking earlier that it's kind of a push sometimes that you need in order to start making money yeah. or to make more money to grow your business because then all of a sudden you have to make money. Yeah. And that can be stressful and sometimes can make it a little less fun. Exactly. But it also is a challenge that makes you actually work and you a lot of times see a lot more growth in your business after you have yeah. that necessity. Yeah, exactly. That's Yeah, we were saying earlier how like – it's crazy because yeah, when you're when you're working a job or you have some income coming in and you're not like you don't have to make money, you're like, okay, I'm kind of doing this. And then the second you you take that risk, it's like yeah. like what you said, you're just all of a sudden like you have to, and then your business like explodes. You yeah. know, I, I have like tripled my income from my nine to five job since quitting my job. Right. And it's like, oh my God, you know, you never thought that could happen. That's so awesome. That's really so, cool. Cool. And I'm, it's cool to see like where you were and then yeah. where you are now and how that like transition has even changed your career. Yeah, yeah, totally. And like and I'm not saying it's easy. It's definitely not easy and mm -hmm. like I'm not even nearly where I want to be. So to like humble it down a bit yeah. for you guys, like it, it can from the outside, like all these people, like business owners or people living the dream, like it yeah. might seem like, oh my god, this how can I ever get to this point? But like 
you can and when you get to the point you're just always going to like continue reaching for the next goal yes, right I'm there's sure always you another goal yeah, <laughs> yeah. And so it doesn't come without challenges yes. you know it's like I still wake up every day like oh my god what am I doing today <laughs> what am I working on where where is my business life going but it's yes. like you just have to really like kind of hone into mm-hmm. yourself and what you want and your goals and your dreams so mm-hmm. Yeah. So how did you, like, for example, when this image did go viral, what were some things that you did to monetize that or start growing your business from that? Um, Let's see. So when this first went viral, um, and we'll talk about what will happen after or what you should do after an image goes viral tomorrow. I have some tips on that. Mm -hmm. Um, But I guess in this case, because I wasn't really expecting it, um, Mm What I kind of started to do from here was, one, I just was like, oh, my God, oh, my God, this is so exciting. This is awesome. Look what's happening. Um, But then I started to get, like, inquiries about um, if I would sell it to people and stuff like that. So then I actually decided, okay, I'm going to print 100 of these, Mm. and I'm going to start saying, like, this post is for sale or this print is for sale. And then I actually um, reached out to a ton of different, like, little farmer markets and um, art things around L.A., like little weekend art shows. And at that point, I had had like a decent amount of work. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to see if I can sell this, submit my work. And a lot of places liked it. You know, some people were like, nah, not really our style. Yeah. So, yeah, you get rejected. You know, it's just something you have to deal with. But um, I got into like a couple different art shows. And then from there, I was like, okay, cool. Like I could sell this. And But to be honest, like the art show world is, it's it's like... You have to sell a lot to make it worth it, Yeah, you know? Yeah. And it's exhausting. Like, I remember this one weekend, um, we, I was selling the entire weekend, and uh, I think I, I paid, like, uh, $600 for my weekend booth, and I think I made, like, 300 <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. Yeah. Is, and you work all weekend. And right. And so that was when I was like, no. Yeah, that's discouraging. Yeah. Yeah. But some people do really well with it. Yeah, so. yeah. I think you have to find your market and find where you're going to be successful. And that yeah. is not going to be the same for everyone. Someone said, if so. you start an account today, do you think it would be harder to get followers now than when you started? Yeah, I definitely think so. Um, unfortunately, it's different, it's different. Yeah, it's a lot harder now. But I'm not saying it's impossible. You know, like, I mean, even if you think about the people that started when Instagram first came out, like, that have yeah. millions of followers yeah. now. I'm like, oh, my God, why didn't I get started sooner? Yeah. But the cliche saying, if you don't start today, you know. Yes, it's probably only going to get harder. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? Exactly. So you definitely, yeah. definitely should. So. so Kelly's asking about marketing yourself and your services um, and the, the ways that you found to be the best for marketing. Um, I guess in addition yeah. to Instagram. Yeah. So, of course, obviously Instagram. Yeah. Um, but then also uh, sharing blog posts on Pinterest. Yes. Um, that's really helpful. And I don't personally, like, know um, a lot about Pinterest. It's not really, like, my ex- area of expertise. But um, one, always, like, when you – if you write a blog post, you want to make a cover photo for it. Um, like similar to what I have on my blog and mm-hmm. and you want it again to be like this vertical sized image for Pinterest and then you want to pin it to Pinterest and then if you do that kind of like over and over you know there's some programs like Tailwind yes. um, that will pin it automatic or pin your stuff and other stuff automatically um, and that's a great way to market that brings people to your website um, yeah And then also, uh, like, Facebook, just telling, you know, whether you post it on your page or even telling people that you know, like, family and friends, saying, like, hey, guys, like, um, I just launched my business. Like, send any, you know, photographers my or send any, like, graphic design needs my way or something. I did that in the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Do you run ads on Instagram? I actually just started doing ads. Um, shout out to my friend Tanya, who <laughs> is my ads manager. She's amazing. And um, she just started my ads last week. And um, oh, wow. I, yeah, it was kind of cool because we set up an ad for um, Lightroom presets and mm-hmm. for my Instagram course. And that, like, in a week got, like, 300 leads. So wow. It's, so I it's mean, valuable. Like, yeah. And I, I only... I mean, to be totally transparent, I only put like 300 bucks into it for like a month or something. So yeah. it's like, 
you know, you don't have to spend a ton of money on would it. Would you recommend hiring somebody for that? Or I mean, I would. I hate yeah. Facebook ads. I but know. <laughs> it's, it's hard. Yeah, it's like, it's so, Facebook ads are like, I don't know, they're a whole different beast. Yes. And if you're spending money, you want to be sure that it's actually going to have a return, even yeah. if it is just a little bit of money. $300 is yeah. $300. Yeah. So. And like, it's all, you know, business right off. That's it. I mean, I'm not a tax expert. I don't want to give you yeah. guys advice, but like, I have people say to me often, like, "Well, I can't afford to buy uh, Adobe, the, the Adobe Suite, or something." And I'm like, yeah. "Well, do you have your own business?" Yes. And I'm like, "Okay, well, this is all tax write-offs." Yeah. You know? Yeah, and really necessary. Yeah, and that doesn't mean you're not still spending that money, yeah. but you know, it gives you a cut on your taxes. Mm -hmm. So um, that's been something that has been very helpful and. All that so yeah you gotta spend money to make money exactly you know? I know it's cliche but it's really true yeah you gotta invest a little bit it's so true in order and to see return yeah and like I'm still in the very early phases of ads in terms of like yeah actually seeing return on them so um like I know people that plug thousands in obviously yes like, you yeah. spend more it's money, be to make yeah. more money. <laughs> I just saw a statistic the other day that uh, Facebook at people spend um, businesses spend $88 million per day on Facebook wow. ads as like a whole or something. That's, that's crazy. <laughs> like, oh. I know. It's kind of mind-blowing to think about. Yeah. Cool. It's crazy. All right. Well, you have so, your sky there. I know. I've just been like talking. <laughs> um, yeah. So one thing that I really like to do when I am just kind of blending, like in this case, um, is to go to my layer mask and then to use the blur tool and make sure you're on your layer mask and not like mm -hmm. on your actual layer and just to like blur out that edge um, of the mask. Like, and so I kind of do this all the time when I'm blending things. Mm -hmm. And right now it's not really doing too much. We're also gonna blur this uh, sky background a little bit too. Um, but then I also, I know you can come in and you can do the shift, like modify edge and contract it by a few pixels. Um, that's a great way if you want to get rid of like this stuff that's happening here. Right. But I don't want to do that because I'm not trying to bring the whole thing in. This is actually one of my favorite things to do is to just go to the smudge tool mm. um, and with like a nice big brush you just, and like right now my strength is on 50%. Mm -hmm. um, so I just am gonna actually like smudge the layer mask in. So just like that. Tim says, or you can just blur the mask using Gaussian blur. Yeah, you can do that too, but I like to have control over the areas the where it's, area. but I guess then you could get rid of the mask right. too. Um, Vinny asks, do you recommend having separate Instagram accounts for personal and graphics work? Or in this case, photo work. Yeah, I mean, so uh, what I did, what I did in the beginning is I had Anna McNaught was like my personal account, and I was yeah. just posting fun stuff. And then I had Anna McNaught photography, mm -hmm. um, and that was just like doing really bad because trying to manage the two accounts. Yeah, is it's really a lot hard. of work. Yeah, yeah. Um, so then I ended up kind of just being like, I'm going to post all of my photography work on my mm -hmm. Anime Knot page. Mm -hmm. um, but now I started a travel page as like my personal page. So yeah, I think it, it's kind of up to you whether you want to have two or yeah. you want to kind of like merge it all into like you being the center of it. You yeah, know? yeah. Yeah, I think it depends on what you want the voice of your business to be too. Yeah, exactly. You know, if you want like something that's kind of separate from you, a little bit more professional, then I think keeping them separate is great. But if you want people to get to know you personally and yeah. see maybe it sneaks into your life as well, then there's no, um, it's not a problem to have them be the same. Exactly. It depends I, I on think, what you want. Yeah, I think that's really great advice because I, I think definitely like combining the two of them and having like sneaks into your personal yeah, life is that so. That can be a really great way to build it too. People yeah. like seeing that. I know, I know. And yeah. although sometimes I find that like I'll lose followers when I'm just doing like showing stories of but I'm like, oh screw you guys. <laughs> yeah. Obviously I don't care about you anyway. I know exactly. <laughs> they can get out of here. <laughs> but uh but yeah. yeah it's like it's because people want to see like and that's why I share with clients and students all the time is like people want to see the behind the scenes of your yeah. work and like yeah, your absolutely. life. And, yeah. and sharing that on your story. That's the other thing. Like you don't one of the main things that I tell people all the time is like you do not want to be 
um, posting like, here, look at my work that I did today, this beautiful piece of art, and tomorrow, like, look at my breakfast that I'm yes, eating. Yes, so you want it to be consistent. People yeah. know what they should expect when they come to your page, when they see your post. Exactly, like, you should totally think of, um, you should think of your Instagram page as like your portfolio, showing yeah. your best work and like, you know, yeah, you can share posts of you here and there and sure. like things that go with it and then use your story to share behind the scenes and anything that's like, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. the story is a great tool for that and a great way to connect with people more and yeah. just let them in on who you are and building that relationship further. Yeah, exactly. I think people, we're, I feel like a lot of accounts are starting, even like really big companies are doing that more just to have more personal yeah. feeling instead of like being so corporate or. Yeah, yeah, totally. Kind I of agree. standoffish. I agree. Tim says, instead of using the smudge tool, you can also use filter other minimum. Let's try that. Yeah, let's see what happens. Kiki says, I'm a fan of two different accounts for sure. So yeah, I think oh, cool. it really depends on um, what you're using it for and how Ooh. you're using it. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> I'm like, wow. So fun. <laughs> Thanks, Tim. Didn't even know you could do that. Thank I'm you, like Tim. a big fan of doing things in like little brush motions so that I can like, you know, control it and mm -hmm. have areas be without it and have areas with it, but then something like this is awesome. It's really cool. Like you can go like. All the way, yeah. Game changer. All right, thanks for that tip, Tim. Yeah. Derek says, I feel like all my followers are interested in what I post now, sports cars and off-roading, my hobbies. If I bring my art into the mix, I'm not sure what would happen. I would say in that case, Derek, then you should probably have two separate accounts if you want yeah. If you enjoy doing sports cars and you want to keep that all on the same page, um, then yeah, I would either get two separate accounts or just transition fully into art and yeah, yeah you'll lose some people, but so it's kind of up to you. Yeah, if you, yeah, I guess it depends on what you want your focus to be. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So let's see here. We added some sky, so now we can, um, we could add a blur to the sky a bit because um, the background here is we have this depth of field working for us, so obviously, mm -hmm. like our background then isn't going to be fully in focus. So let's just convert this to a smart object. And so we could try that field blur. How do you even get to it? Oh, blur gallery. Tim says there's many different ways to achieve the same effect, which I think is something that's really cool about Photoshop. Definitely. So many different ways. Uh, Kristen says, I have two separate accounts, but I feel like I don't have as many likes or attraction to my photography account anymore. Any suggestions? Let's see. I don't have as... Um, I would say, I mean, pay attention to... I'd have to look at your account, but pay attention to, like... Um, you know, how much consistency you have. Like uh, the biggest problem I, I notice most with photographers and everything is um, that they'll be posting like all of their arsenal of work. Like yeah. as a photographer, you know, I, I totally get it. Like I shoot landscape, I shoot headshots and portraits, I shoot weddings, like, but it's not what I share on my Instagram, you know? And so you need to make sure you're kind of like um, deciding on one certain style I guess mm -hmm. and to say that again from before but um and then kind of like a look to that style so if you're like okay I want to just do wedding photography or something yeah then you kind of decide especially if you are trying to monetize it and turn it into a business you should be putting out the work that you're wanting to attract clients who want that kind of work exactly right? like if you don't want to be shooting weddings then don't post that you shoot wedding yeah you yeah. know because then people are gonna see you as a wedding photographer exactly and you're not gonna be attracting the clients that you want yeah yeah and that's such good advice like if you're trying to turn this into a business then you know going back to what we were talking about earlier like there's certain things you need to do for your audience and yeah. for your clients and you know to make money and that's the unfortunate side of it in some yeah. ways because you have to kind of like you know, succumb to all of this, mm -hmm. but. Kind of limit what you're putting out there. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, oh, okay. This is cool. 
So if Anna asks, if you're someone that can do a lot of different things, how do you choose which to focus on? Um, that's definitely going to be like a personal choice, yeah. you know, and then what I would do is I would like choose, think about what is your favorite subject that you, mm. you shoot or that you work on or whatever. Um, and then maybe put mostly that on your Instagram and then in your story you can be like hey did you know I also do x y and z come mm -hmm. over to my website to see that you know yeah. and so that's something that I do sometimes people be like oh you also like shoot weddings or whatever I'm like yeah it's on my website I actually recently took that off because I'm like I don't want to shoot weddings <laughs> yeah. but <laughs> weddings are a lot <laughs> yeah weddings are a lot of work but if you yeah. love it by all means. Yes. So. Well, and like you were saying earlier, you can tell like the photos that have had the most reaction from people were the ones that you were most passionate about. Yeah. So looking at what are you passionate about, what makes you excited to do this kind of work, yeah. what inspires you, and then putting that out there, I think that can help narrow down totally a lot, and yeah. then people will respond better too. Yeah, it's so true. Like showing showing what you're passionate mm -hmm. about, showing the thing that you have the most interest in, and yeah. then directing people um, other yeah in other areas of your business absolutely so many good questions I know in. Like, thanks <laughs> thanks everyone let's see um, so fun I know love it awesome um okay so let's see what do I want to do with this you know, I totally, I'm like off my game on editing because I'm thinking so much about, <laughs> about <stuff>. Instagram. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. I'm actually adding another curves layer here because I really want to like darken up this background. And mm. so I added the curves. And so what I can do here is on this curves layer with, with it selected, I can go command I and inverse it. So, or invert it so that um, then I can actually paint it back in because mm -hmm. I just really want it on these mountains back here. So you can see from there to there. Cool. Don't forget about our daily creative challenge. Um, just a few minutes, we're gonna be hopping over there and you can submit those on the challenge tab. Um, right next to the chat window. And um, the challenge today is to create a glitch um, in Photoshop using filters or layers. Yes, I'm excited to see that. Yeah, me too. I actually don't. So Tim asks, um, would you remove the harsh shadow? Probably the one right by the frame there. You know, I didn't actually in the first one, I don't think, let's see. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, it's still there. But maybe I would. I actually had some people commenting on this one, being like, "The shadow's not real. It's off. It's off." And I, but you know, that was the real shadow yeah. that was there. <laughs> so I think it would depend maybe on uh, where your light was coming from. So yeah, in this case, mm -hmm. you're definitely right, Tim. We would want to get rid of that because we don't. We won't. You got really rid have, of the light source. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, and then I saw someone say that my shirt's hanging out of the photo. So that's something you definitely yes. want to pay attention to on edits where you're really like doing something like a frame or something where, you know, you're within, I don't know, whatever the circumstance, but you want to make sure you look for any mistakes like that. Hmm. So there's like a lot of work to do on this and it's something that I might actually play with. And then I think I would even come in and change this maybe effect that I did here with the curves because mm -hmm. I'm not sure if I like it now. I think, you know, I might even make it darker and then just paint back certain areas as if the light is coming from this galaxy. Yeah, because it seems like it's creeping in a little there. Yeah. Darren asked if you would colorize the sand. That could be really cool. I mean. Yeah, I know someone said red sand earlier. Oh, yeah. Maybe we could play with that. Let's yeah, see. Yeah, I know that's not a color that you incorporate this so would you maybe stick to one of the colors or would you not I, care I think I would just add it I would give it a little bit of a like magenta yeah pinker tone. yeah yeah um Sebastian says lips are kind of important so maybe some gloss or reflection that could be cool lips. yeah I guess I would depend on your light source too yes yeah yeah Absolutely. lots of good tips I love it it's so yes. cool to see everybody's like ideas and stuff um, Richard says, my daughter said that this girl was on her way through the portal and got stopped. Wow. <laughs> That's where the creepy feeling kind of comes in, I think. Yeah. The eye to solo the layer yeah. without, oh, that's a good idea. Okay. 
Um, what did Alt click? Where'd that go? Alt, oh. alt option click. On um, the eye. Oh, thanks, Tim, for <laughs> saving me. Oh my God, so funny. Um, okay, so if I were, like, this is something that happens to me all the time when I'm editing is I'll start working on something, I'll go through, like, the whole process, and mm -hmm. then I'll be like, meh, I don't like this, like, I want to change everything, and, which is why, you know, you always want to work non-destructively. Yes. And I mentioned in the beginning of this that I used to, um, just erase everything, so that was really bad. <laughs> yeah, because then you would have to start completely over from yeah. scratch. Yeah. 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 So... In this case, I might, I don't know, like maybe, let's see, what am I doing? Darren says that the sand could be the water or the ocean too. Ooh, that That'd would be cool. Be cool. Yeah. Um, and like maybe we even add like moonlight coming from up yes. here. Yes, I know you were talking about stars earlier too. I think that would be fun. Yeah, I'm like super excited to play with this later and see. Yeah, what you can do. But you can see here I'm kind of just like painting in, and I'm kind of doing this quickly and not super carefully, but like painting in areas where this light from above would be coming down, which was currently the sunlight, but maybe mm -hmm. we change it to like moonlight or something. Yeah. Um, and so actually what I do is I use, uh, I know Photoshop's like soon to come out on iPad, like the full version. Wow. But uh, right now I use um, uh, AstroPad to link my iPad to my computer. And mm. then I go in with my Apple Pencil. And you can also do this on like a tablet, um, but I'll like paint in highlights like really carefully. That's what I've done on some of my glow edits and like with, you know, a thin brush, like Very paint. Detailed. Like you can see, you know, if I were to go like, like that, with like a a pen or with um like my Apple pencil or yeah. with a tablet, and like get those highlights back. And that's how you start to like make things look really cool and like angular mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um <laughs> carried away by a moonlight shadow. I love it. <laughs> yes. Um. So let's see what. Oh, we're gonna change the sand color. Oh, um, yeah. Let's try that. I'm going to actually, no, I don't want to, I'm going to turn this off for now. Or, yeah, let's make it like, let's just lower the opacity on this so we can kind of play with that sand color a bit because right now it's super dark. Okay. So we can either do like, you know what, I'm gonna turn this off completely so we can play with it. But we can either do like hue and saturation, we can do color balance, or we can do um, a selective color or photo filter. So mm -hmm. sometimes I like to just honestly play with the hue and saturation because I find things that look really cool. Yeah, and you can see what fits. Yeah, and yeah. Like, like look how cool that is. I yeah. could be like an alien girl, you know? <laughs> That's really fun. Um, let's see. Desiree says pink, pink sand. Ooh, so what does yeah. it look like pink? There you could go. do it like that. So you can see, like, sometimes I honestly will open hue and saturation, like, to simply get ideas, you right, know? Right, to be inspired. Yeah, like, now all of a sudden I'm like, ooh, I want a pink dress. Yes, ooh, it's, that's fun. Yeah, and so, let's see, that's awesome. Like, and it's kind of cool that I'm green, you know? It's like... I don't it's know. very alien. I know. I love it. Okay. Tim says using hue and saturation, you can also target the specific colors. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. You can yeah. choose by um, how you do that. Above the hue slider is a menu to pick the colors. Oh yeah. Yeah. Forgot about that. Yeah. So wait, let me just go back here. Okay, so mm -hmm. I don't really have, let's see if we tried yellows. Yeah, because it's kind of brownish to yeah. begin with. Yeah. Oh yeah, okay, cool. Look at green hair. <laughs> so yeah, we could go in and do like pink sand. That's fun. Yeah, and that brings in the pink from the sky. So yeah, then it totally. kind of creates this whole image. And then we could add like the curves back in. Yes. 
So then you start to, and I think I might like in this um, hue saturation layer, maybe fix my hair. I don't know, the pink hair is kind of cool. Yeah. So you can see here um, just like how I get these ideas. They start to, I mean, sometimes I'll have an idea already, but I'll do something like this and I'm like, ooh, pink you hair get a is whole cool. new idea. Yeah. yeah. See, like now it's not as cool without the, <laughs> so I'm just like painting this hair back in. There's other ways you can go about doing this, but, um, and then I got a little bit of pink here. So I would do that more carefully, but I don't know. I almost feel like now it looks like too, it looks sloppy with the mm. hair being a different color. So maybe we leave it pink and then. Yeah, Desiree says, can we change your hair color to maybe a ombre purplish blue? Ooh, so that now we're just getting crazy sand, over here. <laughs> but yeah, then it brings in the blue from the sky. I know. Oh, Ooh, love it. A pieces Steven, of glass on the scene. Yeah, like I, she crashed through. Yeah, I love the ideas. We're going to have to play with this yes. later because we're almost out of time. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, this like zooms past. Yeah, wow. It's nuts. Yeah, um, well, you guys will have to come back tomorrow to see. Are you going to play with it a little bit tonight and then show us some? Maybe, yeah, it depends. I don't know. If she has time. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> a little bit of a sneak peek of what this could be. I know, because I really want to start to like play with how this galaxy light is going to yeah. hit and maybe like moonlight coming from up here. I don't know. This is like, I haven't even thought about re-editing this photo. So it's, it's like, really fun. yeah. Yeah. It's like a whole, whole cool thing to play with. Well, thank you so much for all of your guys' questions and um, for interacting and being so great. We're going to hop over to Discord and look at some stuff that you guys have submitted. So first, um, the challenge was to create a glitch in Photoshop using layers or filters. So awesome! This is by Lawrence. I love that. So cool. This is really cool. Yeah, it's fun. I almost wonder if I would take out the text though. What do you think? Yeah, I think you definitely could. Like, I get the what you were going for Absolutely, with the text. Yeah. Um, but I, yeah, I, I really like the two colors on mm -hmm. the girl and kind of like this crazy futuristic vibe. To yeah, it. I just think the like the actual image is so cool that the text almost takes away from it because I kind of go there first instead of going to the image first. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But it's really cool. This is by Charles. That's super cool. I, yeah. I love the colors, of course, my, my colors Yes, there. all your colors right there. That's awesome. By Marissa. Ooh, that's cool. This is really cool. So, yeah, separating the channels there. I love the, um, like the green face is cool. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's kind of like what we were just doing, you know? Yeah, with the, changing the colors. Changing the color of the skin and everything, and all of a sudden it gives it like this different look, you know? Yeah, this background is fun too, because there's the greens and the reds in there, and like some kind of pattern or something. It looks really cool. Yeah, it almost looks like a city skyline or something. Like yeah. That. Like it's really awesome. Yes, yeah, right here. It yeah. It looks like a city. That's yeah. really fun. Cool. I like that there's glitch in the text as well. Kinda yeah. Kind of brings it all together. It's fun. Is that one glitch? Mask. I don't see a glitch there. Oh, here we go. No, playing around with Iron Man and adding a little glitch to that. Oh, that's cool, yeah. yeah. That definitely looks like it could be, you know, I could see it like moving on the TV. Yeah. Like, Iron Man next <laughs> week. <laughs> Cool. And this one, the car. That's cool. Yes. This is fun. Whoa. This is that creepy cool that we yeah, were talking about yeah, earlier. Yeah, creepy cool. I love it. <laughs> Tying it back to the theme. Yes. So cool. Yeah, I, I really, it's like well done with the glitch and then kind of just feeling uncomfortable. Uh-huh. And the text behind the head there, I feel like that blends really well. Yeah, that looks awesome. So Good fun. job, you guys. Ooh, that's cool. Yeah, this one's really fun. 
I love it. I love like the the glitch layering effect that a lot of people have done. Like it's like the kind of light glitch in the mm -hmm. background and then like a full glitch. Yeah. Um and then and then like a different color glitch on top. Yeah. So many dimensions. Yeah. Here's a portrait. That's cool. I've, I've always loved that effect that you see in like mm -hmm. album art all the time. Yeah. Where it's like the, the two colors. It almost is like the old 3D look, uh -huh. you know? <laughs> Remember when they used to have to make everything pink or pink, red and blue mm -hmm. in order to make it 3D? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does remind me of that. That's really cool. Here's another kind of similar, but then there's more glitching happening in here. Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. That actually was happening on Instagram for a while with those lines going across like people's work. There was like a day yeah. and it's still showing up on, on my page like that. Really? It's so weird. And it, it was like this weird glitch that they had and it was just coming across everyone's images. You remember that? I do remember that, but I didn't know it was still going on. Well, it's not like, it's not still happening, but, but it never like, like fixed itself away. on those images. Instagram, get it together. I know, what are you guys doing? What are you guys <laughs> doing? With the, how how much coming in a day in ads, you think they'd be able to- I know. Spend some of that to fix that. Million. 88 million. <laughs> like, oh my God. Oh, share the love, Instagram. Yes. That's cool. We have another one. So colorful. Yeah. That's really fun. That's really cool. Yeah, I love the, I always love the way like purple, blue, and yellow kind mm -hmm. of play together. Yeah, so vibrant. Yeah. That's fun. I don't know if these are glitches now or. Yeah, is that it? I think that might be it. Cool. That's awesome. Cool. Good job, everybody. Thank you. Thanks for sharing, guys. Yeah. So exciting to see everybody's work. Yeah. It's really fun. It's cool that with like one tool. Oh, we didn't look at which glitch. Oh, here you go. Here's a new one. Whoa. Again, that creepy. I know. I love it. Kind which of a glitch. theme going on <laughs> Which glitch. And a rhyme in there. Yes. That's fun. Yeah, I think it's cool. I mean, we were talking earlier that there's so many different ways to do the same thing, but you can take one idea and make so many different kinds of images with it. You yeah. know, like this is so different from like this, which is different from um, this. Yeah. You know, all with the same kind of idea or like a beginning inspiration. Exactly, it, and it's so it's so true. I mean, just to see the way people's minds work differently and then also like even today talking about this edit and having everybody's suggestions. Yeah, like, everyone has so many different ideas. Yeah, and like someone said, what would, what if she appeared as if she was floating on top of the water or perhaps if the water was seeping through the mirror type of effect? Like that's so cool and something yeah. I wouldn't think of, mm -hmm. you know? And it's like all of these different creative minds coming together on artwork like this. And like, I think tying it back to Instagram, that's what's so cool and like in the business world is like when all of these creative minds kind of collaborate and work together, you can create stuff that like would not even happen on your own. Yeah, you know? yeah, like you were talking about using stock images yeah. and things like that. Like you can make something that nobody else would have thought of. Exactly. Yeah, and I think everyone has unique ideas. And so I think you, like you were saying to do work that is like your passion, something you're excited about, and that's gonna set you apart because it's gonna be things that other people aren't yeah. doing instead of trying to copy other people or do exactly what you think somebody else wants you to do. Right, exactly. And, and something that I think is happening even more and more so now on Instagram is like everybody's just copying each other's styles, yeah. you know, and like you see something that's been done really well and then like 10 other people do it or mm -hmm. something. And it's like, it's one thing to be inspired. It's like obviously yeah. another to like copy stuff and to just, you know, so yeah, it's like figuring out like your own unique thing. Yeah, yeah, and doing challenges like this is a great way to do that and to figure out um, what your style actually is and what you're, um, you are passionate about. Yeah. 
you can play around with maybe something that you would never have you may, maybe would have never thought of doing a glitch or something like that and then that can be really inspiring right. to you or come up with other ideas for something later on exactly you know or just learning skills that you can use in the future yeah i'm like inspired now to do a glitch at it yeah maybe we should make the, uh portrait glitch yes i don't even know how to do that though Anybody tips? How do you glitch something from scratch? Share how you guys made these images with us. Yeah, is this like a template that they use or? Um, I don't know, I wanna learn how to I, do this. I've done, well I did one similar to this before, but it was several years ago and I kind of forget now. Yeah, that's what always <laughs> happens to me too. I do something yeah. like, I did this one thing where you can take like, um, I took stars and then I made them like drip down. That's so and cool. And I can't remember how I did it. It's like, oh, oh watch the stream with Voodoo Val. Yes, uh, that was right before us. So if you guys want to go back and watch that, you can go back to that. Um, and right after us, um, we have filters. <laughs> yeah, I think, oh, wave filters. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I feel like that's how I did it before. Oh mm -hmm. gosh, I have to go back and look because I don't even remember. Um, but yeah, go back and watch that um, replay to get more information. I'm definitely going to do that. I know, I'm going to do that too. That's super cool. Corey says layers, screening, and liquefy. Oh, okay. That's cool. There's the link um, in the chat so you guys can go back and watch that. Marissa says um, that she was inspired by Voodoo Val. So. Oh, so cool. That's awesome. I love it. I'm going to totally do that. So let's see, some more business tips yes. or we can keep working on this piece. Now that I have so many ideas, not sure where to go with it. So should we try like some wave filters? Yeah, let's try. Where do you, what do you guys think glitch wise? What should we do in this image? What should, how could Anna incorporate that? Marissa says blend mode, half tones and wave filters. So a combination of a lot of different okay. tools. Let's see. You can play around and see what it looks like. Whoa. Wow. I, you know, it's funny. I haven't used a lot of these filters um, mm. since like the early days of Photoshop. Like I remember Ooh. when that was like super cool, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it still looks cool when done right, you know? But I remember like as a kid just being like, I'm going to posterize everything. Yeah, when that, all that stuff first kind of started becoming something that everyone could do. Yeah. Everyone started doing it. Yeah. Um, Tim says you could glitch her hand since you have a clean background. Ooh, that would be That cool. would be really cool. Because then that would kind of add that, like, she went through a portal kind of feeling to that. Yeah. The frame. Jerry says the frame should glitch. Ooh. Mohammed says cool. glitch can work very good in this image. I'm going to have to learn how to do this, you guys. I feel like I yeah. never tried this. Let's see. Um, okay, so we got to it. Wave. And... Thanks for all the tips, guys. Keep sending them in. And um, make sure that you come back tomorrow because we're gonna be talking even more about what to do once you have an image that goes viral, um, how to turn a passion like this into a business. So you definitely don't want to miss that. Set the wave to square. Since so says the wave, Ooh. yeah. Wave effect Whoa, triangle. works. Oh, this is so cool. Wow. <laughs> Tying in the creative challenge. I love yes, it. Yes, that's so fun. And learning something new. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> wow. Oh, my God. So many options. I know. You could really do so many different things. There you go. <laughs> oh, my God. If I just came to my computer and saw this, I'd probably cry. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> this is like a mess yeah. up. Okay, I'm going to go back and do that again. <laughs> Let's see. Now I'm just totally playing. But if you guys have more business, I know this is about business in, in creative fields and Instagram and all that. Yeah. So if you have more questions, I'd be happy to answer those as I kind of play around in here and just take some of your suggestions. That's cool. Putting that as a blend mode over it would look really cool. Ooh, okay. Oh, yeah. Do you, um, cause I, I know it's important to create work, like we were talking about earlier, creating work that attracts the kind of clients that you want. Do you still do 
stuff just for fun because you're trying to like reach certain clients or is now most of your client work I would say that kind of work? Everything that I'm posting on Instagram other than if it's like um uh, branded posts. Yeah. It's for fun. You it's know? for fun. Yeah. yeah. So you're still consistently doing that and yeah. building your portfolio yeah. really. Yeah. Still. Exactly. And just like not as often as I, I should be, you know, yeah. like, and, and as I mentioned earlier, that's the problem. You start doing, you start making it into a business and you run out of time to do it just yes. for fun. Yeah. And so I'm hoping, you know, over the next few months and years, like my plan is really to kind of try to like set up other streams of income so I can mm -hmm. turn kind of passive into, income yeah. coming in yeah exactly yeah that's really important Derek says what's the difference between a business profile and personal profile I also see this pop up on my IG account yeah, yeah so we talked about this a bit earlier and we were saying the biggest benefit to having a business profile is um, that you can see your analytics mm -hmm. and you can also then um, post automatically on Instagram and you can kind of there's just like a lot of other perks with the business profile can run ads if that's something that yeah. you're interested in um yeah so there's a lot of features that you get and people some people say that you might lose engagement um and that might be true but right. i think i would say that the benefits outweigh that and i think yeah i, I completely agree i would say the the benefits of the business profile outweigh everything so yeah it's very valuable and you can always switch back if you yeah. realize you don't like it or you want to go back to personal you can switch back Exactly. I'm playing with some blend modes now. I think I over oh, glitchified it. Yeah. <laughs> Is that a word? Glitch. Wow. Oh, so cool. Cool. Let's see. So you're doing that whole area. I was thinking, like, what if we just did the frame? Yes, like. Jerry suggested. Yeah. So I inverted that. Okay. And. Oh, cool. Could do some. That's pretty cool. Like, I'm just kind of doing this quickly, but. Yeah. That's pretty fun. Yeah, I think I definitely did it too much, but. Yeah, but can you now go back and, and pull that back? Oh, yeah, I guess I could because I did it as a smart filter. Can we? Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Wow, you guys, I'm probably learning as much as you are today. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for all the suggestions. Yeah. That was a good idea. I like, the frame is cool because it, it looks like she's like really going through something. I don't even know what, yeah. what it would be. Some kind of portal or something. Oh, I guess I can make it. Hmm. Okay, let's try it. Let's see what happens. <laughs> It's a different. Oh yeah. Yeah, different kind of look That's there. That's cool. I like that. That's like it. It, it almost looks painted. I know. Like, it reminds me of like um, I don't know, like those old things that what were they called? Like the metal things you could press your hand into and it would like oh, make shapes. Oh yeah, it was like little like little metal pieces yeah. that, and then you'd see your hand. Yeah, it does look like that. Like that, or then also like when you could attract little lead pieces with yeah. the magnet and everything. Yeah, science class. Steven says a quick and easy way you could duplicate the image three times and then play with the RGB in the layer style, um, and then mask out rectangles on the three separate layers. So that's oh, probably okay. more that like rectangular look. Cool. Yeah, that's a good yeah, idea. That's cool. Yeah, so many different ways. I know. I need to like write all these down so I can play with this later. Well, I guess yeah. I'll watch the replay yes. from Voodoo Val. It's super cool. That's really awesome. I like. Yeah. Ooh, can, oh wow! <laughs> I'm just gonna be like glitching all this stuff now. Oh, Watch your style transforms even I, more. I know, like become the glitch queen. <laughs> oh my god! Jay says you could use this technique to create flames. Oh yeah, Lots of flames. Um, Justin asked if someone who's interested in graphic design, because you mentioned that you mm -hmm. have a, a background in that as well. Do you think a four-year degree is necessary? Um, I This is kind of a tough question because I know that like so many people have such a strong opinion on this of, yeah. yes, you should have a degree. Or, you know, now people, so many people are like self-taught and they're yeah. like everything, you can learn everything online. What's the point? I mean, I personally feel like having... 
I don't know, it's so tough because having a degree hasn't gotten me a whole lot, but I feel like it it will last through my lifetime, you know? Yeah. And like if you ever decide to change directions or someday when I'm like, oh, I want to get a, if I want to get a corporate job or. You have a degree. You have a, yeah. Yeah. And so that, in that way, it's like, invaluable because mm-hmm. it will last you forever versus just being like yeah well I'm an Instagram artist I taught myself yeah. and like maybe someday I can just figure it out or mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. so that's my opinion on that I guess yeah. <laughs> yeah I think there's things that you learn in school that you can't really learn as easily outside of school I think that critique and that um feedback from professors and and other students is really valuable yeah but then there's also so much you learn on the job that you can't learn in school yeah so it's you kind of have to have I think you it, having both is really great I not that you have to have a degree but yeah I completely agree learning learning both ways and yeah having the degree as kind of a fallback yeah plus like you learn you get a lot of other stuff out of college other than just the yes. degree yeah. you know I think for anybody debating about going to college like it forces you to grow up you're no mm-hmm. longer at home you're you know maybe it just it forces you to have certain social skills or to learn what you like and don't like and again like going back to what I talked about in the beginning like I went to college originally for graphic design then from there transitioned into photography yeah and I was like oh wait I really love this and then that's when I was like I love landscape photography I'm gonna do all landscape then I was like no I love fashion photography and then it wasn't until after college that I realized all the stuff I studied in school I didn't like and it actually well I liked but you know (laughs) And it, I actually was like some of the elective classes yes. that I took in yeah. college that shaped my life. Yeah, you know? the same thing happened for me. Yeah. Yeah, but I still use all of the skills that I learned in those other classes for the most part. Exactly. You know, And like being in school will make you do things like a glitch challenge or things like that that maybe you wouldn't have done on your own and it pushes yeah. you in different ways. So if you decide not to pursue a degree, I would say doing these kinds of challenges that push you outside your comfort zone and do things that maybe you wouldn't do on your own is going to be really valuable. Completely. And like, plus, you know, having like in-class critiques and like working with other students, learning how to work with a team. I mean, that's a huge thing, you know, it's like not easy to work in a team. It's really hard. Yeah. Uh, So, Yeah. Yeah. Um, Good question. If you guys yeah. have any last questions, feel free to ask them because we just have a few more minutes. Yeah, just we're wrapping up here. Ten more minutes, crazy. I didn't really do a whole lot with this piece, but, you know, talk business instead. Yes, so <laughs> which is so valuable. Yeah. Um, all right, let's see. What's some things we could do in the last few minutes here? Like, um, last time I was live, I showed you guys, like, one of my favorite techniques, um... I'm just duplicating all these layers here. I know there's a faster way to do this, but um, one of my favorite things when I'm like about to be done with something um, is to add camera raw. Mm. And um, I did a lot of this with Paul last time I was on and it was like crazy to see what it did to the image. And I love to kind of like add this as the final like really cool wow factor. Yeah. So let's play with that for a few minutes. Okay, so if you had your image and like this is obviously we're not done. We didn't blend things. We didn't get everything (laughs) like finalized. Um, But if you were done with everything and then you're like, I want to add that extra. Like I get this question all the time. How do you have such intense colors on your Instagram? How do you get like the pops and the glows Mm -hmm. and like all that? And camera raw is my little power weapon for this. And of course, there's plenty of other ways again you know doing all of these with the adjustment layers and everything but this helps give it like that oomph so Mm. um this is set up just like Lightroom in a way and so I'm just gonna um I am just going to let's see add some contrast increase the highlights and you can kind of play with this already see I know right it's crazy I like to always bring the vibrance down a little like I think you know this looks kind of like old school and then I feel like this Mm -hmm. looks a bit more I don't know um so sometimes you can add clarity I see when people add like a lot like too much you know um but then my favorite aspects of it are one to do the split toning so this is how I get like kind of the um bright 
or like the warm highlights and then the cool shadows. And so you can see we just like warm that up a bit yeah. back there. And so you can kind of play with like the colors on this. Maybe you want to do cool shadows. Um, so I like to do that. And then my favorite thing to do is to come in with the radial filter and start to really like amplify areas that um, that would have more light. So mm -hmm. I would draw radial filter and I'm just clicking and dragging like around this galaxy area. And then you just wanna make sure you are selected on inside if that's what you're editing. Um, and I would just increase the exposure. That specific area. Yeah, and then I might wanna make this like really warm and kind of have like crazy storm looking vibe. Yes. Bring the saturation down a little. Tim says the texture slider is so much better than clarity. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, clarity, like I've seen people just like go so overboard on that. It's yeah. insane. And I remember like for a while that was the look on Instagram. <laughs> it's, like, it's like fashion, I guess, yes, in a way. It's like yeah. a, that was trending. <laughs> yeah. There definitely are different trends. Yeah. And I think that's okay. And it's okay to play around with trends, but totally. Yeah. So then I just clicked um, new and added a new radial filter, but this time I'm going to go outside and then I'm gonna change these settings and make it like a little darker and like maybe bluer. And so this is just like what I would do in order to get those colors. Um, and then, you know, you can add another one and like maybe if we had the moonlight coming down from here, so you can mm -hmm. see and then you can make that you like- you have those highlights on the yeah. face and the body. So I have to switch that. So you can see how you can like really wow, yeah. enunciate certain areas. You know, is that the right word? Enunciate the areas. Tim says that camera even has some presets. Yeah. Oh yeah, I guess you can do presets in camera raw, right? How do you get to those? AK Instagram <laughs> looks. <laughs> I always just switch to Lightroom, but yeah. um let's see. And so then also the graduated filter is really cool. Um so you can like you know, if we wanted this to be darker down here. I'm just like playing around here. I've yeah. made a total mess out of this image. I would not post this, just FYI. But <laughs> okay, you're playing around and you're learning. Yeah, and we're having fun today. That's we're gonna what learn it's about. even more tomorrow. I think you're gonna work on a different image tomorrow. Yeah, maybe? yeah. So. Tomorrow we're gonna get into a different type of image, and then yes. also. Um, I guess, let's see, we're gonna talk about what to do after a post goes viral. Yes, if you wanna learn how to make money from your Instagram, from your business, turn it into a business, then join us here tomorrow, 9.30. Yes. Pacific time. We will see you then. Yeah. Have a great day.